Greetings everyone and welcome to a Tower of Fantasy new player experience video. With the upcoming anniversary and release of the PlayStation version just around the corner, I decided to make a video for new players that's going to check out the game. The plan is to make multiple kinds of videos and for this one it's going to be about these topics. I literally made a new account for this project. So it's going to be more of like a playthrough where I will show you guys the stuff that will happen at the start or the intro of the game. Rest assured that I will be vague on the storytelling as to not spoil the important plot lines. Once signed in, you will choose which region or server you want to play on. For PC and mobile players all the servers for each region are interconnected so just pick anything. It will then jump straight to a cutscene which we will skip for now as to not show spoilers. After that you get to choose your character's gender where I advise you to pick what you really want to go with, because changing it later on will cost you Taniums, the very same currency that you will get when topping up. Once you know what you'll be playing as, it's time to enter your in-game name. Back then it wasn't possible to use a name that has already been taken, but I've read on patch notes that that will be no longer the case in the near future. Right after this there will be a little bit of tutorial and more cutscenes. Once that's over you will be introduced to some characters and after a little bit of talking, you will be asked to choose which mode of sprinting you would like to have. Choose Auto Sprint which as the name suggests will allow your character to sprint automatically after taking a few steps. On the other hand Manual Sprint will require you to use one dash before your character starts sprinting. Dashes are limited to three uses and while it does replenish after a few seconds, this mode is not practical on instances because your dashes are important. Shirley will take you to Celine where your avatar creation will take place. There are some presets that you can use but try to enjoy making your own if you want. The cosmetics and outfits are few at the start of course and changing anything on your looks later on will cost beauty vouchers, but rest assured because you'll get an abundant amount of that as you play. After that, Shirley will show you around the area and introduce you to more people asking you to do some chores along the way. More information about combat will be shown through a quick tutorial and once that's finished you will meet Franz. Franz will leave and Shirley will give you the jetpack, a type of relic that will greatly aid you on exploration. After that another window will pop out asking you to choose if you want to have a mission dot prompt on the ground. To be honest this is pretty much useless because missions already have trackers but it's something that won't hurt to have. If it ends up becoming distracting for you, you can always turn it off on settings. Following the main quest, you will end up on top of something called Omnium Tower where you will meet Scrapper an amiable mini-robot that will lift the fog on your map. Five more locations in our Asperia map are clouded in fog, and the only way to clear them is by looking for these mini-robots located mostly near if not at the top of Omnium Towers. Although Asperia is the only place with Omnium Towers, the same mechanic of unlocking the map applies for all the other region or districts as they call it. Scrapper receives a report of an attack on a station and asks you to help. In order to reach the place faster you will jump off the tower and use your jetpack. Quick tip! Weapons have their own particular plunge attacks and some of them dives like this instead of heading straight down. This is something that's going to be mighty useful when you're on a high place and want to reach a faraway location faster. A little bit more tutorial and a few chores later, you will be tasked to return to the place you met Franz. Since it's quite far away, we would have to transmit to get there faster.
after doing a little bit of something, ruins will be introduced where you will acquire another relic and fight your very first boss. Well it's going to be one of those boss fights mixed in with a tutorial so I'm not sure if it will count. The moment you leave the ruin there will be a little bit of drama causing Shirley to run home. Zeke and Franz asks you to check if she's doing alright. From here, equip your trial cybernetic arm and get familiar with it because this guy along with the jetpack will be your lifetime partners for easy exploration. From this point forward it's going to be more drama. Skip, skip, skip and you witness Zeke leaving the shelter along with Shirley and a very tall woman. You talk it over with Franz and Palu. A few exchange of words later it gets decided that you will go after Zeke. Franz will then give you a vehicle to help you on your travels. You'll talk to Mia and after going out the gate this happens. This is the part where they change the flow of the story from the older version. Something weird just happened to the Omnium Towers so you meet up with Franz on the nearest one, and for some reason he mentions opening up a teleport to the top of the Asperia Tower of Fantasy, which was supposed to happen not until you've finished all of the Asperia main quests. However, instead of a teleport to the upper levels of the tower you get a prompt showing to transmit you to Hycros instead and I know it's confusing. This is something that only older players will notice, but it indicates that the whole Asperia plotline was just skipped. And we are now meant to go to this new place called Hycros and ask the people their help in searching for a dude you just met. Well, that's not how it really goes, but that's what the game ends up portraying. Anyway, transmit to Hycros and you will be met with a very warm welcome from the guards. You also get to meet a very important person, and said important person promises to help you get to this place called Vera where you might find Zeke or clues of his whereabouts. After a long talk with Arkan Elric, he will leave for a brief moment. Franz will talk to you and out of the blue a memory module starts loading up. It will show you a 30 second clip of the entirety of the Asperia plotline which will make absolutely no sense for new players. Here's the said 30 second clip. Let's be frank here, story-wise the new player experience is an absolute mess and there's no excuse for that. I just hope that this doesn't turn some players away because it does get better later on. Law-wise it's stated right here that everything that occurred in Astra Shelter spanned in the length of six months. After that you'll get to have a heart-to-heart -heart talk with Red Shirley and once that's over, Ark and Elric along with Dr. Claire will inform you that the portal to Vera is now functional. Use the portal and go to Vera along with Red Shirley. Here you will be welcomed by Pepper. After the introductions and a little bit of talking, you can now move around. There should be a track mission prompt over here. Go ahead and press the key or button indicated on your screen. By doing so, it will show this clickable tab named Begin the Asperia Story. Go ahead and click that. This will transmit you back to Asperia and will allow you to take unfinished quests or storylines. The same thing applies if you want to go back to Vera and do quests there instead. This right here is the real flow of the Asperia plot line and how it should have went when Zeke left the shelter with Shirley. 
It is now an optional main story quest, but you shouldn't be a stranger to this type of thing because this skip story function exists not only for 1.0, but also for future version storylines. If you are eager to know the story behind Red Shirley and Zeke's disappearance, then going back to Astra and following the Asperia story quests will give you the answers that you want. Now, why do you think is this even a function on the game? That is probably because some of the rewards from time-limited events can only be claimed by doing particular missions on the latest map. The skip to the next world option will give newer or returning players a chance to participate in said events. It's just that the way this was implemented for the 1.0 map is far from being clean.